Welcome everyone. It's been a bit of a long time uh, since we had a meeting and uh, spring has uh, sprung and uh, maybe we're back to winter, at least for a day. Um, I'll say that what I tell everybody about the farm um, with the cold that we have right now, a little bit of snow is good. A little bit more would be better. It protects the crops. So that's my reason for not complaining about snow. Um, this is our first virtual trails committee meeting. Um, so bear with us. The agenda today, uh, Andrew, if you wouldn't mind putting that up. And Has Jen, had a uh, chance? Sorry, Jen I'm, I'm taking the minutes, right? Just so you yes, might not see you. me looking at the camera because I have my laptop up and the Zoom on my iPad. Yeah, I have I have uh, one laptop for my Zoom and one laptop for my uh, notes. So, um, so did everybody get a chance to look at the agenda? Um, so because we're sharing screen, I can't see you, um, but I will assume that unless you're shouting at me, um, you did get a chance to see it. How's that? Um, so our, uh, we'll start our meeting with reading the land acknowledgement. And I have to change my... We have gathered in Wilmot Township on the traditional territory of the neutral Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and Mississauga peoples. We also want to acknowledge the importance of the Dish with One Spoon Covenant, a peace agreement made between Indigenous nations before the Europeans arrived. It characterizes our collective responsibility to each other and Mother Earth. We should take only what we need, leave enough for others, and keep the Dish clean. By acknowledging this covenant, and the First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples, we are reminded of our important connection to this land where we live, learn, and work together as a community. I've just had a problem with my um, uh, sound. Can you still hear me? Okay. Well, the notification I got said that I that it wasn't connected, so we'll see what goes. Technological fun every meeting. Um, okay, so is there uh, any? We'll maybe stop screen sharing for a moment so I can see everybody. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, is there any disclosure of pecuniary interest? Seeing them, now we'll continue. Has everyone had a chance to review the minutes from the previous meeting way back in October? A show of hands. So Jen. Yes. So no minutes at the Sorry. October 21st meeting. It was informal, but there are minutes at the September 16th, 2020 meeting which I included in the email. So they need to be uh, reviewed and approved before Andrew can post them on the website. Sorry, I said, I, I said uh, October, I meant the September ones. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so has everyone had a chance to review the September minutes? Any changes, any additions, omissions? Okay, show of hands, is everybody good with the minutes? Excellent, thank you. There you go, Andrew, now you can post them. <laughs> uh, so we did have an informal meeting in October. Um, there weren't minutes taken as Dee um, reminded us and uh, we have not had a meeting since then for anybody tuning in and wondering what's been up. We didn't have meetings because with COVID restrictions and um, 
it being trails and uh, having not a great number of things to discuss in the intervening months, we canceled the meetings. But spring is here and we have things we wanna talk about and hopefully some projects to plan. So we're back to it. All right, so the next thing on the agenda, oh boy, see, I need to have this up on my other laptop. Um, is D, sorry, wow. So the next thing on the agenda was the trails update, the cache developments land donation. So there was um, a donation for uh, trails in on uh, Waterloo Street. And Andrew, if you can speak a little bit to that. Uh, sure, so um, there are currently two farm parcels between the current designated boundary of New Hamburg and Nafziger Road. Um, those lands uh, have been acquired by Cache Developments. And in order to separate the potential development lands from the existing dwellings on those properties, um, the, uh, the developer has generously donated um, lands for future trail development that would ultimately link the Loshinger Woods um, to Nafziger Road close to the recreation complex. So certainly um, there's an existing piece that is already owned by the township along the Ivan Deerick drain. Um, and this would connect that to Nafziger Road. So ultimately allowing for a seamless connection between Loshinger Woods the current development closest to Loshinger that is anticipated to be filed kind of in the in this in the next few months, uh, and then through development lands that would occur at some point in the future, likely, um, and uh, ultimately, yeah, there was a there's a corridor that has been desired to be made uh, available, and certainly this is a a huge uh, huge step in connecting New Hamburg north of the railway tracks to the uh, recreation complex. And it it, uh, it means a second connection essentially between New Hamburg and uh, Nafziger. Um, right, yeah. So south so of the railway tracks through the development of the employment lands, which uh, council um, uh, recommended for draft approval and ultimately was draft approved by the region. Uh, south of the tracks, there'll be a connection between Hamilton Road and uh, the recreation complex. And so this would provide uh, a future, you know, as funds are available to see development of trails, it would provide that corridor for that uh, trail to be developed north of the railway tracks. So yeah, it's a, um, provides a great opportunity to, uh, to connect New Hamburg and ultimately Baden um, north and south of the railway tracks. Yeah, just, um, so did anybody have any questions or have you all seen the map of where these trails are that we're talking about? I, I know Councillor Gerber has certainly seen them. <laughs> I haven't seen it, but I'm I'm expect I'm thinking that you're talking about your old property to shout and the two land masses in between, right? That's right. All right. Good. Yeah. So does anybody have any questions about that or comments or Okay, well, um, moving on then. Um, the Sand Hills uh, multi-use trail. So uh, that project, uh, it ties into the Baden Hills development, which we uh, have, has been pretty successful and people have been enjoying since it was finished last uh, fall. Um, this will provide uh, a safe corridor along Sand Hills Roads. So the committee is familiar with that. And ultimately we had been working with MTE consultants to design that project over the last uh, um, year. And ultimately uh, it was tendered and ultimately council awarded a tender to Five Star Paving to complete the work. Um, so ultimately between Snyder's Road and Gingrich Road uh, along Sand Hills Road and then from Gingrich Road to the Baden Hills property, uh, we'll have a multi-use trail constructed along the side of the road. Uh, we have our first uh, pre-construction 
we had a we had one meeting already, but we have a site meeting next week uh, as a preliminary walkthrough, and they anticipate starting the first week in May, uh, and uh, they have uh, 40 days to complete the work. So it should be, and they plan on working within that time frame. So it could be pretty exciting by the time our weather is uh, more consistently warm. Uh, we should have a, a great trail connection for people to enjoy and ultimately link Baden Hills to, uh, you know, Schmidt Woods and, and other parts of Baden there. So a pretty, pretty significant piece of that overall connection and, and uh, great to see that uh, coming to fruition. Absolutely, it's fantastic. Uh, does anybody have any questions on this trail? So 40 days, that means that uh, by the first day of summer. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, for anybody watching out there, they're usually much more talkative. <laughs> Uh, the now Andrew um, and uh, Sandy, sorry, um, just had a meeting about the downtown uh, river promenade in in New Hamburg. Which one of you wants to talk about that one? Oh, I can talk to that. Um, so Amber Shank uh, from the uh, Parks and Facilities and Recreation Department and myself actually um, met. So um, Amber's going to be the primary contact for that project and I'm going to be there just uh, with some of the background and support to support the project as well. But and the two of us um, uh, met today with uh, WSP Canada who were awarded the contract to design the Myth River rehabilitation and the trail improvements uh, along basically from the Cenotaph to the uh, Kirkpatrick Park parking lot um, along the river. And uh, it was a pretty productive meeting and pretty exciting to work with that group. They have a lot of experience uh, um, most recently in Cambridge in a similar instance. So they've done a lot of work along riverways uh, and uh, they have a pretty just in speaking to them today, on, on paper, they sound like they had a pretty good vision and idea for the project. And certainly that was uh, pretty, pretty, uh, um, I can't think of the word I was looking for. Basically, it was uh, easily understood that they they uh, they have some great ideas. And uh, um, it was interesting to speak kind of from a staff perspective, what what we had thought was would be a great idea for that. And, and then kind of um, hearing that that was kind of the direction that they were hoping to work with the project as well. So it, uh, um, yeah, I think ultimately between the staff uh, involved here at the township and uh, the group um, at WSP, it uh, hopefully will be a great, a great design for that area. Um, certainly there are some budget constraints uh, to, to deal with there. And so it may be a phased construction, but uh, ultimately at least having a, a vision and a design that the township and our, our group here and uh, the Grand River Conservation Authority, and New Hamburg Board of Trade and others that will involve throughout the process with everyone coming to the table, um, having a great design in place and then being able to, to phase that into a construction should be pretty great for that part of New Hamburg. Um, just, just to utilize that space better than it is right now, making it accessible, having space for, you know, when we're allowed to gather in groups again, that people can gather in that area and appreciate the views that we have. Uh, and utilize it for events and whatever they, else the, the case might be. So um, council awarded that uh, tender the same night as the Sandhills multi-use trail. So those are um, two great projects uh, that uh, are gonna be good for our community. And they are starting the topographic survey along the river tomorrow actually. So um, WSP is pretty anxious and ready to go. So um, yeah, we're, we're excited to work with them. Excellent. So Andrew, do you have a, a deadline date for when the design would be done? So this is not the trail, it's just the design, correct? Correct, yeah. So yeah. we had given them an end of May as a target date. Uh, and just with the council schedule, um, getting it to council to award, you know, that's probably a little bit too ambitious. And so we did mention to them today that, you know, that was a guideline. And ultimately the goal is to have a great design that everyone has buy-in for is more of a priority than having it done by the end of May. So um, they're going to update their project schedule based on our meeting today and then give us a better idea. But yeah, so this will be design only. Uh, and then 
determine the outcome of that design is actually providing uh, final drawings and uh, cost estimates. So we can then determine what our budget availability is to kind of plan for the actual construction. Just, uh, Sandy, maybe you have a uh, comment on what, what we have in the budget at the moment uh, for that project or, or, or where we're at with that. Uh, for sure. Uh, we do have some, <clears throat> excuse me, some grant funding from the, uh, the RED grant, which is the Rural Economic Development uh, uh, Grant, and uh, also some township money. So I believe the budget right now is about 165000 And then uh, once we get the design, the design piece is a, a decent chunk of that, about 55000 I think, is the design approval. We will potentially look at staging some of the ideas, phasing them in uh, over time to uh, implement the full plan. Uh, we'll see what we can afford once uh, the design is in and um, we'll look at prioritizing pieces of it to ensure that we get uh, the best approach to you know, make this roll out really smoothly to the community. So it's gonna be a really nice addition to that park for sure. Looking forward to it. So does anybody else have any questions on, on that uh, piece? Does everybody know what we're talking about when we say the uh, promenade? <laughs> okay. Paul, did you have a question? Me? No. Sorry, you, unmute, you unmuted, so I thought maybe you had a question. Oh, oh I unmuted it. Sorry. I. All right, let me fix it. <laughs> no worries. Uh, Councillor Gerber, you, uh, I, I noticed you were unmuted there. Well, I was just going to say, in addition to being a great square dancing term, which of course a lot of the people in the area will be familiar with, um, it also is used to describe walkways along a river, which of course is uh, where this is right downtown behind the library and the fire hall, for those of you that might not know where it is. Yeah, somebody told me that it's a term that was used frequently in a Netflix show, uh, Bridgerton? Bridgerton, yes. So, um, any Bridgerton fans watching? There you go. <laughs> uh, this is not Bridgerton. You're on the wrong channel. Um, <laughs> we're not nearly that exciting, at least from what I've heard. Um, okay, so any other questions on that or comments? No? All right, um, so another exciting update, um, the uh, Mike Scout Wetlands Preserve. So that is, uh, for anyone watching, this is not um, something that is under the purview of this committee, but we're very excited about it. So we do like to keep tabs on where the project is and, and, uh, and discuss it um, or hear about it when, when there are things to uh, hear about it. So who wants to take that one? I guess Sandy. Yeah, I can take that one, sure. Um, thank you. Um, so this is a really exciting project as well. Um, the generosity of Mike Scout is uh, unprecedented in this uh, community. And once again, he has donated a significant amount of money to develop the wetlands area. And the street name, it's E.B. Crescent. And I'm forgetting the other one that it backs onto. Who can help me? Andrew, what is that? Uh, Walter Perry Place and Walter Smith Creek Perry. Drive. And thank Smith Creek Drive as well. Yes, yeah. thank you. That's right. So um, this area uh, is already well known by the public. It's used, there's a, there's a swim pond there that is well used for a little, there's a little foot uh, footpath around that swim pond that uh, folks use to, to enjoy some natural area. Uh, but a greater, about 55 acres is actually I believe the total area. And um, the first step for this project will be happening soon. And it is a collaboration between Mike Scout and his designer and uh, the GRCA, the Grand River Conservation Authority, who will be planting about 4,000 trees uh, on this property to build out the, the forest uh, area and to combine that with the existing woodlot that's there now and it'll uh, just be great. I had the opportunity to walk the property with Mr. Scout and his designer Phil Holtz and uh, it was a really cool experience. Uh, uh, Mr. Holtz is very uh, enthusiastic, the designer, and he uh, has just a, a lot of really great ideas. 
Um, ultimately, what the vision is over the next couple of years, because it will take uh, some time to build this out, uh, there will be uh, we can call it a promenade if you want, uh, but it'll be a, a formal uh, uh, trail network that is actually on a, a raised a raised trail area that you'll you'll be walking over top of the natural areas. Um, it'll be a fully accessible walk uh, a pathway that's built up above the uh, above the wetlands. And um, the intent is to try to attract as much natural life into that area as possible. Uh, creatures great and small. We, we hope that there will be everything from deer to, to uh, well, cre creepy crawlies, uh, whatever you want to call them uh, in, that, in that space, and uh, certainly lots of birds and um, looking at meadowlands in certain areas, attracting butterflies and other, uh, other uh, creatures that it's just going to be a really lovely space. Um, the, the, the actual trails will be uh, probably about two kilometers worth of, of uh, walkways and it'll be um, uh, there'll be a little parking area there as well so that folks who are coming this will become a destination location for sure and it will really be a great uh, place to put New Hamburg on the map once again for uh, and Wilmot Township on the map once again for a unique uh, experience to uh, come to the community so um, yeah well I'll be uh, enjoying participating on this uh, on this working group uh, while it progresses and um, the design was approved the concept design was approved by council uh, last month as well and uh, I think that the response from the community is going to be really positive for this uh, this and, and just adds to our trail components uh, again and uh, really exciting for the township so Couldn't agree more. I'm, I am really, really looking forward to seeing that uh, move forward. And I know at the moment, um, we've had some uh, questions about volunteer involvement, uh, but we're not quite ready for that uh, in this project yet. They will, uh, there will be opportunities, we've been told, and um, certainly those will be communicated to, to the community when the time is uh, right. Yes, I, I meant to mention, sorry to um, add that, you know, part of the project will be uh, growing our own saplings that can be transferred into other areas uh, within the property. So that'll be a piece that we will definitely be looking for volunteers. This large planting with the GRCA, they're using their major equipment uh, so that um, you, they'll be planting, you know, the 4,000 trees probably in a, in a couple of days. So it's uh, not really a volunteer opportunity because they're using machinery to do this work, but it'll be a great way to get a jump start on the project. So. Excellent. Paul, I think I saw your hand up there. You had a question? Yeah, because, uh, yeah, this is very interesting, uh, uh, Sandy. Um, I just got asked a question there the other day, and I was just thinking about our trail system. I got asked by somebody where they can plant a tree in memory. Have we ever thought of that? That people want to, that there would be somewhere on our trail system that they could, because we want trees. I know that the Snowmobile Club, we planted a few and everything like that. So it was funny that this person just asked me there the other day and I said, I don't know where you can plant a tree in memory. <laughs> uh, yeah. Not that it has to be plaqued or anything like that. People just, you know. Yeah, uh, through the chair, um, we, mm -hmm. we would be happy to entertain those opportunities. We are hoping um, to start building out some of our um, services like that, you know, purchase a bench, purchase a, a tree and, formalizing that a little bit more when we have the opportunity. We're working through some of those pieces and hope in the next year or so to have that more formal. But in the interim, we're happy to uh, speak to anybody who's interested in donating a tree and, um, and getting a plaque uh, put with it. And we'll, we'll work through that one-on-one. -on -one. So feel free to send them my way. Okay, thank you. I know that that has been done in the past that uh, somebody wanted to plant a tree in memory and they, um, at that time, had, I mean, this is a number of years ago, um, approached the uh, park staff and, and it was accommodated. So that's, uh, yeah, always, always welcome trees, right? Any other questions on uh, the 
very exciting scout wetlands. All right. So um, that brings us to talking about um, moving forward and what else is on the uh, trails master plan. And I don't know um, if you all have that in front of you, um, but you know, we've accomplished, uh, I think, a fair bit in the last year. And, uh, and in spite of the uh, pandemic, um, and there's more on the docket. One of the things that has come up, um, and a number of residents have raised this over the last couple of years, that most of the trail development has been happening in and around New Hamburg and Baden, and between New Hamburg and Baden. And the answer to the public on that, and to any of the trails members who are wondering the same thing, um, although I think you all are pretty well aware of <laughs> the reasons for it, um, half of the reason is that that's where the land has been donated um, and where we own land as a township. So it's a lot easier and cheaper to build trails um, to create spaces within property that we already own. So if you happen to have some uh, land out there that you would like to donate for trails, um, please get in touch with our lovely director of parks, facilities and uh, recreation and um, manager of planning, Andrew Martin. They will be very happy to assist you in, uh, in presenting that to council. Um, we're, we're definitely in the market for, for uh, land for trails. Um, also, if you happen to know anybody who would like to donate money for trails construction, we're happy to take that too. Um, so as a committee, um, you know, we need to talk about what we want to do this year. Uh, any projects, um, plans, how do we want to approach? So anybody with any ideas uh, on the, the ideas of, of how we can get trails with what we have currently outside. Um, and, you know, unopened road allowances are already owned by the township. So maybe that's something we should talk about at some point um, as a possibility. So anybody have any comments on these, uh, on this? Ooh, nobody wants to go for it. So I'll, I'll jump in. So I think it might be helpful if we could have a master plan update on the trails master plan so that obviously we would look towards Andrew Martin and all his staff and say, you know, where do you see the next critical trail development that we can focus on? And then we as a committee can talk about how do we get you the resources, either physical, the land, or do fundraising to support the next critical trail that we want to be developed. But honestly, I've read the master plan and I would not be able to pick what would be the most important one that we need to focus on. So I would look for the expertise to the township staff to do that. So there are a couple of things in there that, yes, um, you know, the Trails Master Plan um, is, I believe, uh, eight years old at this point. Um, so, you know, a lot has changed in the community in eight years. Um, and I'll ask Andrew to speak first as he was uh, responsible for the lion's share of that work. If you would mind, it wouldn't mind um, commenting. Uh, yeah, with respect to, to a status update, is that, or, yeah. So, yeah, yeah so, but where we're at and what, sure. you know, things are, are still uh, in there that we haven't uh, engaged with, and then, yeah, we'll go from there. Yes, I think certainly your summary of the, the fact that direction, the, the projects that we've moved forward are largely due to the, where they're located and the availability of land, and also, um, Certainly, the the funding source significant amount of that money uh, was um, was from Mike Scout and uh, uh, and land he was working with within the area. Um, certainly, 
guided where we where we focused some of those priorities. And one of the major priorities when we wrote the trails master plan was connecting the recre Wilmot Recreation Complex. So uh, the first kind of the primary, the easiest way and, and kind of the primary focus was to get Baden and New Hamburg connected to that recreation complex. But some of the larger visions uh, involve connecting that to other areas. So heading both um, east towards uh, Petersburg and Mannheim and ultimately um, you know, south to New Dundee. So there are, there are concepts of where that trail ideally would be located, but pr most of it uh, deals with private land ownership, right? To get that overall connection. But certainly the vision within the trails master plan when, was always to interconnect in as much as possible to interconnect all of the communities. So um, we did do kind of a, not a formal update, but uh, um, did produce kind of a, a status um, of where things were at and, and that actually largely was um, to help Sandy but when she joined the, joined the team to kind of let her know where things were at. So it was more informal for her purposes, but we could kind of adopt that uh, and uh, bring that to the committee so you kind of see where kind of all the, the points within the trails master plan, which are completed, uh, which are planned to be completed and which would be ideal, but no, nothing's been done to date. Um, and you know, I think that's something we could uh, we could fairly quickly produce um, uh, because it's largely been done already. Uh, and then maybe that's something that we, you know, could discuss at the next meeting, kind of could have that available. And then we could have a discussion about that. Uh, in terms of this year's project, certainly budget, budget allocations were already provided for the two primary trail projects, which is the, are the multi-use trail construction and the design of uh, the New Hamburg, you know, the Nith River Promenade. So from a staff resource perspective, I think those are those are our priorities that we have within the work plan for 2021. Um, and uh, you know, if there's opportunities to with existing trails that the committee could work on something related to those, you know, that that's something that you know would have opportunity. But I think taking on new projects from from a staff resource perspective this year probably isn't something that we're uh, we're able to accommodate. Um, I'm speaking for myself, and I see. Uh, Sandy nodding as well. So, um, you know, but there are opportunities, like, for instance, you know, when we're dealing with kind of uh, footpath type um, improvements. So, you know, one of the goals through Schmidt Woods, when the initial kind of two hiking paths were created, there was additionally three, initially three, but one was too wet. So we abandoned it. Um, the two, the, the green and the orange trails, those were done just to get something started, but there's additional opportunity or both improvements to that because there's it's been used a lot. There's a lot of erosion, um, so that might be something uh, to, that the committee could look at that doesn't involve as much um, municipal resources, uh, and you know could be an, an easy win, right? To to improve uh, and better utilize the space for hiking, um, and you know there, there may be a couple of opportunities to do that. Similarly, in Lashinger Woods. Um, you know, certainly we created that spine last summer, um, but there's an opportunity to create uh, some, you know, offshoots from that, some footpaths that aren't accessible, that require limited resources, and ultimately, from a volunteer perspective, might be something that could be looked at. So that's just me speaking to those things. I don't know if, you know, Sandy may have uh, some differing uh, ideas or, or I don't, or perhaps disagrees with that, but uh, um but, but from, from my perspective, looking at it, I think those are, I love to be involved in those sorts of things, but to take on another large project this year isn't something that I have the capacity to do. And I don't think there is from, from a parks and facilities standpoint either. But long story short, I don't, my answer to your question is I can reproduce what I provided to Sandy with some minor tweaks to that, uh, just to let know, let, uh, to see where we're at. And then that might be a good starting point. Thank you, Andrew. That's that's great. And and yeah, that you know, um, obviously we're not going to be able to knock out another uh, uh, project like the um, Baden Hills Trail uh, every year. <laughs> well, I think both of you would be pretty exhausted, and we don't have that kind of cash. Um, but. Uh, but yeah, if we can look at, you know, some of those footpath type projects, um, that would be great. Um, Sandy, did you have anything? And, and yes, um, 
that would be wonderful if we can we can um, have that document that you had provided to Sandy um, uh, updated and brought to the next uh, meeting. That would be great. Sandy, did you want to add anything to? Uh... Thank you. Yeah, just really to um, support and confirm what Andrew said, um, we're pretty maxed out on projects uh, across our department for many reasons, not all trail projects, obviously, but we've got lots of on the plate and of course still managing the pandemic challenges with our parks and trails, which are, uh, you know, creating extra workload for staff. So positive thing, people are getting outdoors and using those, uh, those features. So that's wonderful, but um, we certainly wouldn't have the capacity to take on anything new this year either as well. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll work with Andrew on that update. And um, I, haven't, I haven't looked at it in a while. Uh, what he provided me is almost a year ago and a lot's happened in a year. So we'll definitely bring that back to the group. And um, I think that in time, we can start looking at some of the uh, settlement areas uh, outside, uh, you know, Baden and New Hamburg and seeing what we can what we can do in some of the properties that we already own, some of the parks, there may be opportunities for internal trails that we can look at down the road. Uh, but the parks and rec, or the, sorry, the trails master plan is, um, is not due for a few more years. Um, so we will definitely take a look at, uh, at the priorities and uh, bring it back to this group. And um, just an opportunity to shout out to Andrew. This is uh, this is a great, his enthusiasm for trails is greatly appreciated by uh, my department and uh, we uh, soak in whatever we can of his energy towards trails and, uh, and we are working as he mentioned Amber Shank from my department is working with him to try and learn some of his, uh, his uh, skills and knowledge and uh, you know we'll, we'll work together wherever possible but um, thank you to Andrew for his, his energy and efforts. We're certainly lucky to have him. <laughs> Gonna make you blush, Andrew. <laughs> I tried to I remain expressionless. <laughs> Poker face. But thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, Paul, you had your hand up. Yeah, um, I'll ask a question before I make a comment um, and probably to Andrew Martin. Uh, the Pastel Roadway, uh, I understand while well, the landowner was informed that that's a goal for this year. So what kind of time frame do we have that there's that Pastel is going to have to move uh, uh, the trails so that we can utilize our right of way or the roadway going through? The snowmobile trail. No, no, there, there's a right of way um, to sell. Well, Andrew knows what I'm probably talking about there. He sent me the, uh, the roadways for that industrial basin or so, which would join up to Hamilton Road and zigzag over to uh, Nafsinger. But the yeah. first little part uh, past Pastel's where the railway track is, um, that's a piece that's not being used by anybody. And I just kind of want to know what, what direction is that going in before I can uh, make a comment on hooking us up to the WC. So if I could respond, um, I, I think anything related to private property would have to be an in-camera discussion. So I'm not sure we can comment on anything related to the ownership. Yeah. Ownership. Oh no, it wasn't. It wasn't the ownership. It was uh, that property. I guess is a right of way, isn't it? Uh, yeah, so, yeah so we're right dealing with the uh, so Pastel's driveway right now is actually a municipal road allowance. Right. Um, so ultimately, they have they have some of their trailers parked on that road allowance right now, and ultimately to, to accommodate that road construction, they would need to be moved. Um, so right. we've been working. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, the subdivision has been draft approved. Uh, they're working on the the the, mm -hmm. final, the formal engineering. Um, we don't anticipate, uh, based on discussions with the developer, uh, we don't anticipate any earth movement this year. Um, we are hoping to see, you know, additional engineering get closer to the point of, of servicing, but that's likely a 2022 um, project. We don't have an exact time frame, but uh, don't anticipate that, um, um, you know, timing for Pastel dealing with uh, moving the trailers and that sort of thing is not something we, you know, we would really get into a discussion here at this point, but but ultimately, um, you know, when they're, when it's time to construct that road, be kind of, uh, they're aware of what, what they're required to do on their site, um, but it's not uh, not something we would see moving, uh, moving this year. Um, 
so for the committee's benefit, I guess part of that road connection between Hamilton Road and Navsiger Road, uh, the design includes a multi-use trail um, along within the boulevard. Uh, so there'll be that kind of cycling walking network along the street and also connecting through um, woodlot ownerships that the developers actually donated to the township mm -hmm. in advance of subdivision approval. So there'll be an off-road connection that ultimately links from this future street through the woodlot um, right across from the recreation complex. So last year where the entrance was modified to Nafziger Road ultimately ties in with, you know, there's an existing snowmobile trail mm -hmm. there, trail there rather, but uh, that trail will connect through the woodlot and ultimately to this street. Um, the reason we haven't taken any further steps on design or looking at that is we need the, the infrastructure and road to be in place to connect to. Uh, it doesn't lead to anywhere at this point. So once the road is through, then the next step would be to look at uh, the design and, and ultimately construction as funds are available to provide that off-road connection. But the nice part of that subdivision is the initial connection in the, in the road allowance will be done as part of the, the road construction. So there will be a, uh, a trail connection albeit not through the woods, uh, but there'll be a trail connection from Hamilton to Navsiger uh, as part of that, uh, that development. But um, completion date, I don't know. Start date likely for servicing in 2022. Okay, so yeah, so I've talked about maybe me and you going for a walk there so we understand where our, our zone is or so, because uh, I didn't want to lose the opportunity through the Trillion Fund through the Ontario Federation a snowmobiling to bypass around it and it wouldn't cost uh, the township any money if we were looking to uh, redirect around that one parcel of land that is questionable uh, if we're going to stay on there even though it's well built and a very well used trail all the time but uh, so that could have been developed and uh, my uh, my hat's more on for this program now I've uh, many years with the Ontario Federation of Snowmobiling and I've uh, really trying to get somebody else to step up because I've told them I'm stepping down. So, um, but I still uh, have my heart in it to work with you and, and get the Trillium fund. Uh, so it helps our township and interlocks, uh, interlocks us in the future where it can be connected and the rest is all done. So if we can still do a walk someday, that'd be great. I think uh, Sandy and I will probably have a discussion about that and we can we can get back to you with kind of what our approach might be on that and uh, sure. figure something out from there for sure. All right. Thank you. Any other questions on that particular one? So um, not seeing any. Um, the the uh, Sorry, pulling my agenda back up here. If I can find what I was doing, there we go. Too many documents open on my computer. Um, uh, so I think, uh, you know, it's pretty clear from, from what the staff are saying that, you know, and and from budget, we, we aren't going to be taking on a project like we did last year. However, I think that, uh, you know, that we can talk about trails maintenance. Um, perhaps there's some opportunity for some trails beautification. Uh, if we wanna talk about maybe um, working on a, a project collaboratively with Let's Tree Wilmot. They're looking for places to plant trees and they bring a really great organizational capacity for volunteers. Um, there are a number of people who've reached out to me at, and asked uh, for volunteer opportunities um, uh, in, in the trails construction and trails maintenance. So, you know, I'd like to talk about how we engage them, how we continue to move forward. And, um, and I, I think maintenance sounds like a good place for us to be this year. And go ahead, Sandy. Yeah, that's, um, I just wanted to mention that um, at, in last year's budget, we did get approval for an additional parks and facilities technician. So we do have a little bit more support for the trail systems and we have developed a, um, an inspection program, a formal inspection program now. So, um, but we appreciate all eyes on trails and any time that 
um, a committee member or a member of the public sees something that is not safe, um, we would be um, greatly appreciative of the information and then staff can go out and, uh, and do appropriate repairs as necessary. Unless it's Baden Hills and then we're going to send Andrew out there to fix that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but we will be um, doing a more formal inspection. Um, it, now that we've got the amount of trails that we have, we needed to uh, take that step. So thanks to council support for that new position. Uh, we do have staff that can respond to dangerous circumstances and move trees and things like that as needed. But um, most certainly, uh, you know, footpath maintenance and things like that, we really don't have a lot of capacity for. So that would be uh, certainly something that would be uh, well supported. And um, yeah, for sure. Just wanted to update you on that. Now, sorry, Sandy, it is me. I know we approved the position. Um, have we hired somebody? I knew you were gonna ask that. Yes, we have, and his name is Chris. I can't remember his last name off the top of my head. Um, the way that the maintenance and the inspections will work is that um, our full parks and facilities team, so we have uh, four full-time employees now, plus the supervisor, they will all be trained on the inspections for the trails and uh, so will some of our students. So um, we do have that new position filled and he, I believe he's starting this coming Monday. And our complement of students are coming back on staff uh, staggered over the next month as well. So um, the, there will be a sort of a, a number of different people involved in, in the trail inspections and maintenance um, throughout the department. I'm a full believer in cross-training folks so that uh, lots of people can do lots of things. So uh, that'll be something that we get going when the snow disappears, perhaps. <laughs> I think most of it's melted. Uh, okay, so uh, does anybody else have any comments or thoughts, um, ideas that they'd like to raise under the uh, subject of, of projects to take on for this year? Rob, go ahead. Hi everybody, it's great to see you all again. Um, this isn't really a, an idea of a project, um, but one thing that we've talked about in the past was maybe to think a bit about um, potential interpretation signs that could be added to our existing trails. Um, not billboards or a lot of signs, but uh, just a little bit that would help people understand perhaps the uh, history of the, of the property, maybe some of the uh, physical features or some of the plants and animals they may see uh, on their hike. I think that would be a nice uh, thing that might be sort of uh, an appropriate size for a, a COVID year um, that we could get done that might enhance people's visits. Yeah, that's a great uh, point, um, Rob. We, I, we've talked about a number of ideas on that subject and uh, I think I had shared some pictures I took at a, a another property um, where I was hiking with my family and they had very very simple just chunks of wood with um, hand painted um, tree species names mm -hmm. um, and they were just you know really super simple um, staked beside the tree and you know something like that I uh, would be an easy volunteer project and we could do it safely outdoors or people could make them at home and we could sort of coordinate a, a day to not gather. <laughs> uh, restrictions are lifted and the numbers are down. Uh, Sandy, you had your hand up, go ahead. Uh, um, for sure, I think that's a really great idea, Rob. Um, what, what I would love um, from the township's perspective is for if this committee is interested in creating that narrative and getting the words uh, down on paper, um, it would be something that I would like to develop a standard sign um, style for so that it's, it's something that we can work towards creating on a number of different trails. Um, of course, there's a cost to that kind of thing, so we would have to take a look at at uh, some signage, uh, whether our signage budget can support something and maybe look at, you know, one trail at a time kind of thing. Um, but it's definitely something if this committee could uh, contribute to the, 
the, the narrative, the information and the history piece, the language and pull that together, then staff could certainly um, look at um, helping with the, the signage piece, perhaps not necessarily this year, but maybe um, it could be something that we could work towards, but um, I, I really like that idea for sure. And that is something that will um, be part of the Mike Scout Wetlands project as well, an education component, uh, which I think is really important on trail systems, so. Yeah, no, I, I, I think, you know, and Sandy, as you're talking about, uh, about us developing the narrative that is something that we can do virtually. You know, we can have, uh, we can we can send text back and forth and, and uh, collaborate on uh, documents within our dra um, shared drive uh, to, to create the, the text and, and language for that. Um, does anybody else have any uh, thoughts on that or other ideas? Swear for everybody watching, they do know how to speak lots more than this. <laughs> All of them. Uh, uh, camera shy? It's okay. Uh, one comment, I guess, if part of that, if we're writing there, I think, provides, especially some of the more recent projects in those woodlots, you know, the, the removal of ash trees. So explaining the trend, like having, you know, a discussion about the transition of, of uh, kind of a lifespan of a forest, right? And, you know, certainly the ash borer impacted that, but just to explain, you know, the ash borer, explain the normal transition of woodlot versus kind of the, the need to, to, to remove those trees. And, you know, certainly the, the region has some of that, uh, you know, Albert has some of that background information from a region's perspective on, you know, of the natural transition of a forest and the, you know, the lifespan of trees and the ash borer and, you know, just so we can, you know, certainly certain, certain areas are, are more thin than others and to have signage in that area to explain what's happened. And, you know, you know, if we do some plantings in that area to show kind of the idea of regrowth and, and uh, you know, just something to add to that narrative, I guess would be, might be a worthwhile thing to do in a number of our woodlots. Yeah, definitely if you make it um, language that is going to be somewhat timeless as the new growth comes up in that, explain, you know, yeah. yeah, I think that's a great idea. Sandy, go ahead. Um, Andrew just uh, triggered a thought for me as well that the committee could certainly help us with our website content, um, drafting some information that could be added about each of the trails and their significance and what they mean to the community and how they came about and you know information about the land donations that allowed them to happen and uh, we haven't had a lot of um, uh, staff capacity to really build out the trails pages on the website I think Andrew provided a lot of the content initially if I'm not mistaken but um, that would be another piece that you know anything that can go on a sign in the trail can also go on the website from a research perspective and We've always got students looking for information on uh, on things in the township. So anything that's created, uh, it could also fit into the website. And of course, staff would be responsible for building that out. But the development of the content and the drafting of that information would be really a, a great project as well. Yeah, certainly to uh, to provide data text to to be uploaded. That's a, a great idea as well. Um, I would not want to be the one trying to actually upload it. Not my area of expertise. Uh, um, anybody else? Well, I'll say one other thing that um, I, I really love in the spring is the wildflowers and there are so many of them and that's something else that uh, would be really great to call out as um, sort of do a, a, an inventory of what species bloom at what time in any given forest uh, along the trail and tell people you know look for these flowers um, on this trail at this time of year. I think it would help 
people understand why it's important to stay on the trail as well. Um, because walking off the trails destroys them, even if you can't see them when they're not blooming. So, anybody have any other uh, project ideas? It sounds like we're sort of really uh, hitting on a uh, theme here of information gathering and building and, and uh, connecting and, and sharing. Um, and some... Uh, basic maintenance and, and updating to, to the sort of more footpath type trails for this summer. All right, um, if there isn't anything else, I will move on to the last item on the uh, agenda, well, second last item. Um, Friends of Provincial Parks is is on there, and what I it's Friends of Wilmot Trails. So when I'm talking about when I'm getting requests from people to uh, engage with us, uh, there are only so many people that can be on this committee because a bigger committee gets a little unwieldy and not very productive. But there are a lot of people in the community that would really like to be more actively involved and, and engaged in. Uh, our trails network. And I think that it would be really positive for the community if we created a Friends of Wilmot Trails. Now, that's not something I can create personally. So we're going to need some volunteer champions to help us with this. But it, I'd like to talk about it here. Does anybody here have any experience with any of those? Are you members of something like the Friends of Provincial Parks uh, organizations. And um, maybe we'll just have a discussion about how we can begin the process. I have some thoughts, but I'd like to hear from all of you first. Anybody? Rob, go ahead. Yeah, I think this is a good idea. Um, just as a bit of, a bit of, uh, somewhat background that may or may not be relevant. Uh, when uh, my family first started camping, one of the ways we would select campsites we'd never been to is if they had a friends page, which indicated that it might be interesting enough that enough people wanted to actually support it. So uh, I think this is a really good way to get people involved. They can um, contribute things maybe that, that we can't because we don't have enough people to do so. Uh, organize hikes, all sorts of things like that. So yeah, I'd be, I'd be uh, supportive of this. I also envision it as a way to um, organize fundraising, you know, because obviously as a township, we have uh, said that we do want to put our money to towards trails, but we have a lot of competing priorities for budget allocations. And you know, if we can harness um, fundraising within the community, that would be very beneficial and enable us to realize a lot more progress on trails um, as well. Anybody else? Thoughts? Comments? Do you like the idea? You hate the idea? You're quitting the team over this? Don't all talk at once. Okay. <laughs> so, well, maybe we'll go about it this way. Everybody, uh, can I can I get a show of hands? All in favor? Everyone uh, agree that we should pursue um, creating a Friends of Wilmot Trails um, group. All right. Awesome. I figured that was the answer, but you yeah. um, know. So everybody's in favor of that. Unfortunately, Graydon couldn't be here uh, tonight, um, but he, he did send his regrets. Um, so we'll, we'll uh, he'll get a chance to look, look at the end. Uh, I feel like he'll probably be pretty positive about this particular idea since uh, he's very, very keen on the volunteer aspects of being on the committee. 
So Jen, so, Jen, mm-hmm. in your discussions with people in the community, do you know of someone who would be willing to take on this initiative to start this group? And because it, it would be um, a significant amount of time, I think. <laughs> So I don't, it's something that I will have to reach out to the people who've requested an option to uh, volunteer with the committee. Um, But I wanted to talk to the committee before I said, hey, you know, didn't want to put the cart in front of the horse there. Um, Even though I kind of figured you all would uh, be in favor of it. So I will reach out. And if any of you know anyone, uh, please do um, connect with them and uh, if they're willing for their contact information and to the group and, and we'll put a list together and, and start working on this. Do, does anyone have any experience like in terms of either being on the friend side of it or on the organization side of it? Like I'm just thinking logistically what sort of parameters like from a township perspective would need to happen when you have an arms like group sort of promoting and, and doing a lot of good, but also potentially kind of running with things that, that maybe aren't the vision of the township. Anyone have any connection with either side of that coin? That's a great question, Andrew, and Sandy's got her hand up, so I'll let her answer that. Yeah, good question, Andrew. Um, definitely something like this, any fundraising campaign that is used towards a township asset would have to be done in cooperation with the township and our, our finance department would have to be involved. And there would have to be some parameters around any kind of promotional material that's produced um, and a- approvals of, of you know things like that that, uh, that go out. So it would definitely have to run through the township and uh, there would have to be a, a town, township liaison person to uh, connect, uh, to be in, ensure that all the proper procedures and protocols are in place for sure. Anything that has the township logo on it uh, requires that kind of uh, uh, um, interaction anyway. So for sure, it would have to be something that goes through from this side of the coin. <laughs> and, I would, and I would say, if I can jump in here, sorry, Andrew, I think I cut you off there. But um, the Ontario Provincial Parks, I mean, we're all about sharing at all levels of government. So they have lots of, you would have terms of reference and what falls under our scope, what falls under the township scope. Um, There's lots of documentation out there we could pull together. And that would be one of the first tasks of the Friends of Wilmot Trails is to come up with their approach and their protocols and how to, like, how do we get approval from the township or um, how that process works and all that could be mapped out. Yeah, and I, I would uh, anticipate we work with them very closely, um, you know, and maybe maybe one of the terms of reference would be to um, have them appoint a liaison to this committee so that, that you know, we, we actively stay in touch. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a project. There we go. That's another project for this year is to, uh, consult with, uh, willing volunteers and, um, look at the terms of reference and how we develop this and what the, the parameters need to be. Andrew had, you had your hand up. Yeah, I just, well, I was just thinking we, one idea perhaps would be to, to look to Woolwich because they have the Woolwich Healthy Communities, um, group that, that, um, essentially it's not a friends of, but to a certain extent is, a similar similar example so um perhaps we could and Ann roberts works for which would be a kind of a contact uh, to find out how that works in conjunction with the township so that might be a good example for us to look at just from a municipal perspective to see how how the two work together and you know i mean i know that group you know, was responsible for doing their trails guide and a number of you know they're involved in a lot of projects related to um uh, maintenance and monitoring of trails throughout Woolwich as well. So that uh, in addition to other, they have other mandates as well, but uh, that might be something to, to look at a little bit more. Excellent. Anybody else have any uh, thoughts or ideas, questions about the Friends project? All right. Seeing nothing else, I think uh, we've kind of got ourselves some uh, 
action items and D I'll be looking forward to those in the in the uh, minutes and all of you watching you can uh, see those the minutes will be posted after they're approved which will be after the next meeting and our meetings typically occur on the third Wednesday of the month at 4 30 in the afternoon if we are online you will be able to watch it here if not um, they are we frequently do meet outdoors and uh, that will be posted ahead of the meeting. So uh, any other business, does anyone have anything else that they would like to discuss or, or uh, bring to the committee today? Nothing, all right. So our next meeting, as uh, I mentioned, is May 19. That's the third Wednesday in May. And I look forward to seeing all of you again. <laughs>